In a recent interview by Sandy Moreau with Lars Moravi, the Tesla's head of vehicle engineering, we got a lot of really great information, and I would highly recommend you take a look at the main video. The link is here on the screen and in the video description. But based on that, we got some great news and information that pertains to Giga Texas, specifically about these four areas. The first is the caching machine area. The second is the die shop facility, and now we know what that is for the stamping and also Cybertruck painting system areas on the southeast side of the main factory, and also about the crash testing. Now for today, we're going to concentrate on the casting machine section and some of the news that uh, came out during the interview. So let's listen to what Lars and Sandy had to say. It's like 8,000 tons? No, this is actually a 6,500 ton. The rear, Are you kidding The me? rear is 9,000 tons which is why we don't need necessarily 8,000 ton press for the front. When we started, we thought we would. All we right. said, oh, we're gonna need 8,000 tons, but we worked through the team and we actually can make this front one on the same tool, uh, equipment as we make the Model Ys. That may have gone by quickly, but that was big news. Here is the rear casting of the Cybertruck. And as Lars mentioned, they need to use the 9,000 ton Idra Giga press to make this. And here's a image of the front giga casting for the Cybertruck. And the big news is that they're able to use the 6,000 ton giga presses that are already here at Giga Texas and also serve Model Y production. Now this is big news because not only does it mean that the Cybertruck production ramp can happen faster, but also the marginal cost for Cybertruck castings is being reduced because they're able to use installed equipment for the Model Ys, which is outstanding. So here in this image, I wanna give you an idea of where this is all located. On the casting machine structure on the upper left, you can see where the four 6,000 ton Idra Giga presses are already installed. On the right, you can see where the two 9,000 ton Giga presses are already installed as well. We can also see a newly installed aluminum recycling furnace that is almost completed. And the green area shows you a area where there are already foundations for future expansion of the Giga presses. Now, the interesting thing I wanna show you based on what Lars said is take a look at these three arrows. They are gonna be using two Giga presses, the 9,000 tons for the rear and one for the front. And let's listen a little bit more about what Lars had to say. So how many how many presses are, are pushing these out now? We, uh, we have one for the front, two for the rear. But we, as I said, we have the Model Y ones. Yeah. So we could we have four oh, of those. We could swap the die out. But we only need two. Uh, like cycle times are down enough to make, you know, five thousand. We only need two presses: one for front and one for rear. To help illustrate what we're talking about, this image from the 14th of August, I took inside the casting machine structure. This shows the two 9,000 ton Idra Giga presses installed. Also in this image, we can see that new furnace or actually two furnaces being installed in the center bay. And that dashed area is the probable expansion for the future of Giga presses because the foundations are already in place. Not visible, but off to the left is the four 6,000 ton Idra Giga presses that have already been installed and are operational. So really great new information that we got from Lars during that interview. So there you have it, a brief review of what we learned from the Sandy Monroe interview with Lars about the casting machines section and also the Cybertruck castings. I hope that you found this portion of the discussion helpful and stay tuned on a future video. We'll be talking about some of the other areas that were mentioned as well.